welcome to the Neshoba Regional School Committee regular meeting of September 14, 2016. This is the first meeting of the new school year. Welcome back, School Committee. Welcome, Superintendent Clenchy. We're going to get an update from you in a bit. And we also have our new student rep, Nick Mellis, here with us today. So welcome, Nick. Um, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm uh, calling the meeting to order at 6.01. Um, do we have any citizens' comments tonight? Yes, I do have some. Do I need to read the policies? No, you don't. Okay. If there's no other. No. I would just like to mention that the Stowe schools this summer, uh, in particular the Stowe PTO, <clears throat> lost a very good friend in Bill Clack. And um, he was a great supporter of the center school lip sync. He, even after his daughter graduated onto Hale, he helped us every year put on the lip sync. And then not to mention his invaluable service at Hale with the performances, the audio support, and recording all of the band and um, choir concerts for all of us parents to hear and enjoy with our children later. And I just want to say on behalf of the Stowe PTO, our condolences to his family. I'm going to lose it. It's all right. And um, he is already very missed. Thank and you. Bill, Thank you Bill, very Bill reached much. beyond Stowe, too. He's it was a shock. All right. Thank you, Nicole. OK. Um, if we have no other citizens' comments, then I think we're going to um, Superintendent Clenchy is on the agenda for um, her entry plan, and while she's got it done, I think we're going to take a couple more weeks. But there are some components of it that you want to share. I'm going to report on tonight. So if you would please. Well, absolutely. And, and I thought what I would do actually is, is um, bring up most of it during my superintendent's report. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if I could just speak first of all, I. I uh, when I set when I set up the entry plan, I looked at observing, listening, reviewing, and acting. And I know that there's some community members here tonight, and I just want to take an opportunity here before we go into our new business to say how much I've appreciated meeting with so many people. Um, I still continue to have regular meetings every Monday morning with our town administrators, with Don Lowe and Ryan uh, McNutt and. Uh, Bill has come to one of them, but we faithfully meet every Monday morning. Um, I also want to extend a special thank you to the, the police as well. Uh, they've been outstanding. I mean, I had one situation that I, that I had to deal with, and uh, they were so responsive. It was just wonderful. The, we've had a number of things throughout the schools that we've had police involvement, and they have just been incredibly responsive. So I want to extend a huge thank you out to our police and, and our, our fire folks as well. We've done many of our fire drills now for our, our first uh, fire drill of the seasons um, have been have happened, and again the fire our fire departments have been outstanding. So a special thank you to those people in our communities uh, that, that have met with me, met with us. We also met with our DPW heads uh, the other day, all of our, our leads. We talked about emergency protocols and uh, procedures and what that's going to look like. So I think that we're all set for our first school closure. I'd like to point that out, Nick, so that you know that we know what we're doing when it comes time to close, close down the school for the snowstorm. So we'll, we'll be ready for that. So again, thank you to them. They were saying that that's the first time that they've ever, ever been called around to the table, and uh, it was just a great meeting. Then they went, went off and met with Jeff as a follow-up thereafter. So we've had a lot of convenings of different groups, and it's just really, I, I think, been very helpful for all of us. Uh, Jeff and I also have been meeting a, a, a number of different roundtables, uh, particularly with our facilities folks and, and our um, uh, custodians and that also has been very very helpful so in the first part of the entry plan where I talk about uh, you know observing and reviewing and listening before the acting component which is what I'll, I'll go after part of that tonight in the superintendent report and then in greater detail next meeting 
um, I think that we found uh, we felt that we had a good foundation laid and that we were ready to do the acting when we did it. And as I said, when I go to the superintendent's report, I, and Jeff and I will talk about facilities tonight, uh, we, I think you'll see clearly that we've been very thoughtful in our approach, very planful, very strategic. And we feel very, very good about what we've managed to accomplish this summer. So I think it's been a great start. Um, I want to also mention, I thought you did a great job, uh, at Chairman uh, Ramosco, at our first day back assembly. That was great. That was just terrific. And I think we got some very good feedback. I'd say overarchingly, I think we've had a great start. Um, it doesn't matter what building you're in, the buildings looked great, clean, uh, the high school, the floors were stripped and waxed this year, and I don't know if you noticed, Nick, how clean, we had windows cleaned over there, and lots of painting done, we'll talk about that in our, yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're really, really proud of how the buildings are looking right now. So uh, Jeff and I will go into much greater detail when we get to facilities. Perfect. So. And I think I know... I know several of us around the table have received um, comments from folks within the district who have had, um, Nicole sent, I forwarded it on to Superintendent yeah. Clench, I know Neil's heard from several people, I know Kathy's heard from several people, um, that people are really, the folks in the schools are excited, they're pumped, and yeah. they felt good about that first day back. So. That, that's wonderful. I, I got some comments tonight even about the awards, you know, and how much people appreciated the longevity awards that we gave out this year. So. I think it was just a great start. So yeah, I'm really excited. Good. So let's keep that going. Um, all right. Thank you so much. And then we'll get into a little bit more when we get into Jeff's portion. But why Absolutely. don't we turn it over to Nick to do our student report out? Okay. So I have the athletics report. Um, the fall season is underway. The regular season started off last week for field hockey, volleyball, soccer, football, and golf teams. Cross country had their first meet yesterday. Our volleyball and football teams are home this Friday. The football team will play Shrewsbury at the home opener. Um, most of the teams haven't really like started yet. Like they're like they haven't competed yet, um, and that's what the athletics said. And I also thought it was a good idea to have a list of all the clubs that we have in Neshova because I went to the office and I learned that we have some clubs that I didn't know about. <laughs> um, Amnesty International, Best Buddies, the Interact Club, Creative Writing. Debate Team, DECA, which is a business competition um, club, the Drama Club, the Gaming Club, the Gay Straight Alliance Club, the Green Team, the Math Team, the Mural Club, um, the Neshoba After School Bible Study, Cur Current Events, and Philosophy Club, Neshoba PAC, uh, the National Honor Society, uh, the Newspaper Club, the Model UN Club, Robotics Team, Weightlifting, and Yearbook. And that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So we'll see you back in two weeks, right? Okay. Or I guess more stories. We want to hear stories. Good ones. <laughs> okay, bring the problems to your principal. <laughs> bring us the good ones. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, moving on. New business. Um, Dr. Graham is here to ask or to talk to us about a request change in the calendar for late starts. So thank you very much for having me. I will try to make this very brief. So I am asking that we change two of our late start days in the spring. When the um, calendar committee came to you with the proposed calendar and you voted on uh, the calendar for this year, the state had not yet published its MCAS days for the high school. And so, of course, there are two days that now um, coincide. So on March 22nd, we have a, a late start day at the high school, and that is going. That is a um, uh, MCAS day for ELA testing, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And then May 17th is a math MCAS testing day. And trying to do a late start and MCAS testing at the same time is not a good idea. So what I'd like to do is request that we move to those two days. And I have a specific request. Uh, so the 22nd, the first one is very easy, the second one um, ends up being easy, but I'm not as happy about it. Um, so March 22nd, what I would propose is that we move that late start from the 22nd to the 15th, so then it no longer coincides with the MCAS. That doesn't coincide with anything else. That's a normal week at the high school. They have parent-teacher conferences at the 17th um, K-8, but not at the high school. So that would be a relatively easy switch and shouldn't impact anything. The 17th, May 17th, is more complicated. 
You know me, and I like to have as much collaborative time at the high school as possible. Having said that, I could not find an easy date to switch that to um, <coughs> in order to try to keep 12 late starts and move that date. It required like suddenly switching a lot of other things. So what I am recommending, which I'm not entirely happy about, but I couldn't come up with a better option, is that we simply eliminate the May 17th late start day. So that leaves the high school with 11 late starts as opposed to 12. Not super happy about that, but um, that was the best solution that I could come up with to avoid the conflict with the MCAS. Does anybody have any questions? Is, wait, is well, I, I'm just wondering. Um, Based on the conversations that we've had in the past, the late starts actually affect the end of the year because there's lost learning time. So I'm wondering why not just drop them both? So the, we have to get to 990 hours of instructional time over the course of the year. We get that with the 12 late start days that we have. So the current calendar that we have at the high school <coughs> exceeds the 990 instructional hours that we have. So if we were to drop both late start days, that wouldn't help us reach something that we hadn't already reached, but it would mean losing additional collaborative time. So it would, it would mean two hours of instructional time that's regained, but the, my argument for the collaborative time um, is that that time ends up being incredibly valuable and is worth the lost instructional time. So eliminating both of them, to my mind, loses collaborative time, which is something that I don't like to lose. So the purpose of all the late starts is strictly collaborative time for teachers? Correct. And what does that do with PD? Isn't that what PD is? When we have all day PD? So it, we have early release days. Um, I think we have six throughout the year, if I remember correctly. And professional development occurs on early release days. So professional development is also happening on late start days. It's structured a little bit differently. Um, but collaborative time is, in, I would argue, very important to professional development time. Okay. <coughs> Kathy, you had a question? No, I figured it out. Oh, okay. So, um, so unless anybody else, and if anyone else has comment, concern, the only thing I would say is please, please, please remember when you come back this year to ask for the late starts, we are going to ask for data that helps us understand the value of the collaboration, what they're doing, and how that's helping the students. Because they're, uh, you know, Lynn's mentioned it, but we've heard from other parents too that they see it as a takeaway from learning time. And if that is truly what's <coughs> helping the collaboration to move, and I, you know, we all get the value of that, but yep. just show it to us so that we can do this again next year. And that, just very quickly say, so one of the things I did over the summer and at the beginning of the school year is we've now mapped out a schedule for all the different professional learning teams that meet during that time. Each professional learning team put a proposal to me that was relatively detailed in terms of what they were going to accomplish, what outcomes they were going to achieve. Each professional learning team is tracking its meeting times with agendas, minutes, and products, and that's stuff that's all available. So you're, so you're actually doing almost like an evaluation of it? Yes, I mean, we will do evaluations along the way as well. Um, so okay. in other words, I'll be asking for, I'll, I'll be periodically getting feedback from teachers about how they see that okay. working. But um, we're very closely, I'm very closely keeping in touch with what's happening and asking teams to be very um, tight logistically about tracking the work that they're okay. doing. Okay, great. All right, so then without further, I'll end. Is, is it a quick one? That, yes, so if you're asking him to come back with something, yep. time frame wise, when would that well it would sense? have to get to us before we would be voting on a calendar because we would need to have you know a couple of weeks to review it so before the calendar so before the calendar committee gets together before the calendar committee presents its yes. recommendation to the school committee okay. and then excuse me one second <coughs> and then this year with the calendar i'm hoping that we can find more weeks that are uninterrupted because we have a lot of choppy weeks in the calendar but anyway getting off track can someone make a motion um, in, in your packet there is dr. Graham has provided an overview of it so I think the recommendation is to or the motion is to move the March 22nd late start to a March 15th late start and eliminate the May 15 May 17th late start at the high school so moved so moved second Jen, second mark all those in favor unanimous thank you thank you thank I have you one thank question you. before he goes so there's no spring or March parent-teacher conferences for the high school is that correct okay so that was the conflict. okay, okay. Um, 
Thanks, Dr. Graham. Thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Um, and the vote to dissolve the uh, Nisoga Regional High School Space Task Force. I'm going to turn this over to Mark. Um, the high school task force has completed its task, which is to conduct an investigation and produce a report on the nature of the capacity and the use of the high school. And also it's received a demographic report. And the um, task force asks that their, their work be recognized and the committee be dissolved. And so this is the, the desire of the task force to recognize the conclusion of their activity. And um, so it's up to us to formally end the um, task force role. Does anybody have any questions? No? This was um, Bob Sikansky's recommendation the last time he came in front of the school committee. He delivered all of his reports. He delivered this study, as Mark said. And now the function of that um, group is completed with the, with the delivery of that information. So if no one has any questions, we'll um, entertain a motion to dissolve the Neshoba Regional High School Task Space Task Force. So second. Kathy and Jen is a second. Thank you. All those in favor? It's unanimous. So um, one comment about this, that doesn't mean that it just dies. We, this is going to be one of the big topics for this year. One of the things that the school committee is going to be addressing is what are we going to do with the high school? Are we moving forward with an SOI? And how are we going to organize ourselves and orchestrate the discussion to involve the three communities? Because this truly is not just a school committee discussion. This is, this is a decision amongst the three towns. OK. The Florence Sawyer School Robotics Donation and Establishment Activity Fund, and I think that's Ms. Pat Maroney, her business manager. Come on up. Hi, Pat. Hi. So with the Florence Sawyer School, um, they have had a very successful um, past year, and they have received some um, our have been offered a donation of $2,500 to seed a program called Robotics, and they would like this to be within their student activities. Now, according to the new student activity guidelines, whenever a new um, activity comes into the student activity funds, it needs to be accepted by the school committee. That's why I'm bringing this forward, and at the same time, I would like to accept, have you accept the donation to seed the program for the Florence Sawyer School. <coughs> Questions? Lynn. Is this a general fund or is this just for robotics? This or is just for a, robotics. So they've already got their own. Right, um, they've established program. that they want they have the activity. This is to seed them for this coming year. So this would be one of those dedicated revolving accounts that we <laughs> that, that is only dedicated to that activity. Which is fine. And the funding source is the parents advisory council. Okay. okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions? Who would like to make a motion? Neil, I knew you would. Motion, um, make a motion that we accept the $2,500 uh, seed money for Florence Sawyer School um, from the uh, Florence Sawyer School PAC um, for the seed money. Blah. Let me start that over again. I'd like to make a motion <laughs> to accept the $2,500 seed money from the FSS Parent Advisory Council for the purpose of creating a robotics program at Florence Sawyer School. In, in a dedicated? In a dedicated and established account. Within student activities. Within student activities. Thank you, everyone, for helping me do that. Thank you. A second. Takes Can a we village. get a second? <laughs> second? Jennifer, you seconded. All those in favor? Thank you, PAC. And can Florence, can I? Can, I do have one. It's associated with this. So, um, can we? I believe the high school also has in the revolving account a grant that was given to them. Eighteen hundred or so comes off in the top of my head. Is there a way that we can remind the high school that they have that grant available for the robotics fund? They didn't use it. Do they not know about it? I'm not sure if they know about it. It's been there for, it, it looks like three years or so. And it's been three years, years. Right. Right. <coughs> At least three years. That's all we have visibility back. We'll make sure that you know, I'll, I'll we'll make sure that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Neil. That and we're good. not completely sure how it was set up and what the purpose was, but it, it does specify for robotics. And okay. with them I'm having sure gone to, to, to nationals, I know they scrambled to raise the money to go to nationals, so it'd be nice <coughs> to 
Okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat. <coughs> Appreciate you coming. Um, okay. Uh, the Mass Association of School Committees Policy Manual Development Contract. Very excited about this. Who'd like to speak to that, Susan? We uh, the policy subcommittee met before this meeting, and it's our recommendation that we accept the contract. And can you just for folks who may not have looked at the contract, and I don't see it in this packet, um, can you tell us what the cost would be? The terms. The so the cost over the initial three years would be ten thousand five hundred dollars, um, thirty five hundred dollars per year in the first three years. And then there's um, a hosting fee of $950 that kicks in that second year. And um, <coughs> you know, we're just hoping that it's, it has gone live at that point so that the hosting fee you know, would make sense to, to spend. And then after that, it would be the $950 a year to host oh. it online. Oh, so the first three years is them getting us up to speed yes. and cleaning up our Con the our policies, policies, which desperately need it mm -hmm. because we have so many out of date policies. But that also allows us to keep our policies in line with MGL and some mm -hmm. of the enhancements, which is one of the things that we yeah. really need. Yeah, Neil. So, so today in policy, we came, uh, it, there was sort of a realization that a lot of the policies we have, um, even though we're trying to tweak them, they're from 2001, none of us are attorneys. And part of the benefit of having these mask boilerplates is they've been vetted through attorneys and they're brought current. So we're kind of making stuff up that may or may not hold the test, you know, the litmus test. And it's, and it's I think, sort of a dangerous thing for us to be doing. Well, and also, it also, that's a great point. It also allows us to, to contain our legal line item as well because we're not passing all of our policies through right. the attorneys exactly. at whatever it's costing us an hour. Mm -hmm. That's great. Kathy, thank you. So this also includes hosting. So we would yes. be able, when you go to the policy link on our website, it would direct us to MASC and you would click on the show button and boom, everything is Correct. Correct. A dream come true for you. It's we're great. We're looking forward to getting together. That's great. <laughs> Have you gone through it? Is it easier to find things? Have we gone through the one that they, they have existing? Have you seen yes, the existing ones? It is. Yeah. It's right. a, we, it's so much yeah, easier. Um, in fact, the sure. leader went <laughs> during a meeting and lift a couple of things up for us. So that was good. good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're excited about Going that. forward, is part of the hosting helping us stay up to date? I mean, do they? They're I think yes. they do, it, that there was what she had mentioned before um, oh. our, our last, the Dorothy said that when that, that when you are part of the service, that every time there's a legislative mm -hmm. update, it automatically feeds into your policies so that they trigger us to say, "You guys need to look at this." Mm -hmm. So that's a good. That's another. Yeah, really it's it's just feature. a it's a it's a safety net that our policies are up to date, and that's one of the issues that we've found over the past. It's an efficiency. Year. Yeah, it is definitely an efficiency. So we'll just have to prioritize where we want to start within that manual? Oh, I'll give you some suggestions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I think you'll find that MASC has got a, a very uh, definitive yes. plan of how okay. they go about this, yeah. and they're, they're very well organized. I think you're going to love it. Really. I think we are, too. Okay, any other questions, comments? Can I get a motion? One motion. I move we accept the contract for the MASC to update and post our policies. Second. All right, Jennifer, give me a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Nice work, guys. Thank you. Okay, so the next item under new business is the oh, school committee's 2016-17 overarching goals draft. Okay, so the document in the packet is the result of a full day um, on site that the school committee and superintendent Clenchy had on the last Friday of August. And the goal of that was to try to look at what did we do last year, what did we say we were gonna get done, and then where are we gonna go um, this year. Understandably, our goals need to support the district improvement plan, which supports the school improvement plans, 
And once we get to a point where um, Superintendent and Clenchy and we have a district improvement plan, we may have to augment some of our goals or we may have to add a couple. But I think that the, what we've come up with um, is, is pretty consistent. So I hope you all had a chance to read it. I think that um, stepping back from all those big, huge post-its we had on the walls, when you put them all in front of you, it's like it all feels disparate and all over the place. But I think what came out of all of that work was a common theme of how does the school committee ensure that it has the processes in place and the consistency in place to do the job that we're supposed to do consistently regardless of who's sitting in the seats. That's really the key and that's really where we all need to be. And as I started looking at all the work that was done, it just kind of was there. So I think everybody's kind of thinking in the same vein in order for us to get to that point. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be discussion. Things may need to change. You may, you know, we've still got some work to do on it. But I think that it will allow us to establish procedures and then additional policies to ensure that we're doing the job that we're supposed to be doing and we're holding ourselves accountable because that's really what we're here to do. So um, any questions, comments on the goals? Kathy? Looking at um, under overarching goal on desired outcomes, um, the the second sub bullet, mm -hmm. drive reporting initiative through finance personnel. Um, it's not really clear to me what drive reporting initiative means. What what is actually being done? So I think the point of that is um, the work it happens in the subcommittees, right? So you let's say you're in finance subcommittee, you're gonna have recommendations for some of the reports that you need. You're gonna want to know. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because each one of our major subcommittees really directly ties to one of the three goal one of the three tasks of the subcommittee, I think that the recommendations could start there. Because you're gonna have in finance specific reports you're gonna want. And in personnel you're gonna have specific reports you're gonna want, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. Like we did it this past sure. year with all the work that you did. Yep, yep. So I think it's a what are the reports in the subcommittees? What are the reports that you, what's the data you want? Because part of this goal is trying to alleviate the one-off questions and all of the requests that were going back and forth to the administration, which is a, a time suck for them. Mm -hmm. So to be more structured, what do we want? Why do we want it? What are we gonna do with it? Or is it just an ask to have an ask? There's gotta be a purpose for it, and it has to feed some other larger initiative we have going on. But if we can standardize those reports mm -hmm. and then create a document that says, you know, every quarter we're getting this report, or maybe there's one or two reports we need monthly to look at, so that we can just stay on top of things, and Superintendent Clenchy and her staff know that they're just going to automatically revise these reports, I think it's just going to make the whole process a lot smoother. That makes sense. Yep, I get it. Any other yeah, and, and as we were talking in policy committee, but I don't want to speak for you, I think what it would look like for a finance subcommittee versus policy subcommittee could look very dr right. dramatically different, or your committee. So I, I don't think, you know, I think Susan, you had a really mm -hmm. good uh, way of articulating it, thinking, should it just look like the, the same reports that finance sub? No, mm -hmm. it's a totally different thing. So, you know, in some ways it's as per needed, too, and we left that open, too, for policy subcommittee, maybe personnel too. The finance is in a whole different category, so it probably needs something that's really regular. Right. But depending, I mean, uh, so for example, as you're meeting with us on Monday, there, you know, there are a group of us that's, that are going to meet with you to basically report out to you why we feel we need X. Yes. And so I think that that's really what you're talking about. Yeah, it is, but I can see in personnel, like I would want to see the spreadsheet that you would put together that had all the non-union contracts and the um, compensation and all of the additional um, non-benefit compensation items outside of salary. I'd want that every year. Yeah, and I think we'll see a difference this year from last year. It'd be good to compare it and, and right. show what has. But that may be one of the right. reports for personnel. But the other thing that we ask for and um, is um, comparable salaries and salary ranges 
for <coughs> any, any position that is non-union. And that's, and that's an ad hoc thing, yeah, right? Right, right. But that would come through personnel right. on behalf of the committee. Yep. Right. Right. So why don't we um, feel free to send comments, questions, changes to me, and then you know I'll compile everything, and then we'll come back and I'll we'll go at it again. Um, for this, if the subcommittees could please, in the next, I'll give you two meetings, so four weeks from now, um, come forward with your reports that you'd like. Unless finance, you probably have some that you could bring forward at the next meeting and ask for. And please um, feel free to do that. Maybe. Because there may, be, there may be reports that you guys believe, mm -hmm. you want to make the recommendation to the school committee that you believe we need monthly. So I don't want you to have to wait two months to get your first report. So could, as part of the policy of subcommittee's discussion tonight, could we, with the whole mask policy manual update, I think you know, there was a couple of policies that we thought might be nice to hear some feedback on how the implementation was going, but didn't necessarily see that a regular report needed to be filed, so we agreed to just put on the agenda every month there'd be a superintendent report and she would report out and then if we had a question can we ag ag agree I mean I know that this is our annual goal this is our right. goal for this school year yep. is there is there any way to be a little more open-ended with the policies of community you still want us to see if if there isn't a report that you want one. then there isn't okay, but I can tell you there's two new policies I'm right. going to ask you guys about yes. this year okay. with with regards to some of the stuff that we've learned through the audit Okay. So, yeah. but I be but because you're moving to this this environment, I mean, okay. you know, for the ninety percent of the work is going to be there. You guys yes. just have to review it and bring it forward. Right. I don't know that you would need a report. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, our, uh, two. Does anybody have any questions on develop school committee norms and accepted practices that ensure no interruption in school committee processes and oversights? site as individuals join and leave the committee. And this was the discussion that day about creating a, um, a manual for the school committee because all of us who came into the school committee came in and it was like, uh, you get this you know, 40 minute discussion, here's this, 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 and this, now you're off to the races and thank God for the MASC training because that's where we get most of our questions answered. But that doesn't speak to the Neshoba district that has its own culture, its own structure, the school committee is going to have its own expectations. This is going to be a big effort and um, I haven't decided if somebody would really like to work on this, let me know, otherwise I'll reach out. I'll work on it. You will? Okay. You're helping. <laughs> and, um, so any questions on that one? Are we good? Do you guys think that's a good idea? Does it work? Let Neil. We had discussed um, briefly about having an ad hoc uh, committee for the creation of the student handbook. Is that something that? The student school handbook. The, 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 thank you, school <laughs> committee. Got to get my brain plugged in here. Um, the school committee handbook. So is that something that still be looking to move forward we, on? I would love to do it if, if, if you'd like to work on it with Kathy. Yeah, so I'm happy to <laughs> It's not about Kathy. Kathy. He's on technology, he's <laughs> on finance, he's on policy. I, I'm happy to, to, through finance, what we come up with, provide some, you know, in, input or whatnot, but yeah. So, as needed. Uh, um, does anybody else want to work on it? Nobody. You're going to be working no, on the survey. Yeah. I don't think necessarily a subcommittee or a, an ad hoc committee is needed for this because we're all going to be putting in our own input so but we need someone to compile and and you know put it all together and lead it Harold yeah yeah so mm -hmm. I think you know I the perfect choice there to lead it so <laughs> but I don't think an ad hoc yeah. committee yeah. Is and other districts needed. have them so I yeah. started right. looking at those so. right maybe we don't need it let's let's why don't you give it a shot do I have a deadline yeah you have a month mm -hmm. to get us an outline okay. a month. Outline's good. Okay. <laughs> Lynn, are you making your list of things of um, to do list? Yeah. Yeah, Kathy's busy. <laughs> I might be willing to raise my hand if you would like support. Sure. Yeah, I would always welcome <laughs> collaboration. So um, two meetings from now, 
the subcommittees are going to have their um, tentative proposed, mm -hmm. making it very loose here, <laughs> list of reports they may need throughout the year and indicate frequency. And then um, Kathy and with the support of Mark will prepare an outline for what that school committee handbook. Thank you for taking that on. We give her um, a month or two weeks? Uh, it's giving me a month. I'm giving her a month. It's it's just a month. Which is the same as the other because it's. This isn't a, I don't weeks. think this is like Okay, a moving on. PSC, so overarching talk. goal three. Uh, the Neshoba Regional School Committee will review and revise policies for up-to-date alignment with Mass General Law DOE goals and standards which reflect the Neshoba communities. I believe we just took care of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not that it's completed, but <laughs> I think that one's good. And then overarching goal four. The Neshoba Regional School Committee will build on its <coughs> school year 2015-16 budget process to provide more visibility into the district's budget operations and extend its community outreach. I think this past year was a banner year for the finance subcommittee with the, um, the budget book. We got a lot of positive feedback from the community um, and I think uh, I've heard couple of the folks from the finance subcommittee say that they want to dive deeper on the budget book so oh, wow. challenge yourselves that's great so we're good with that one mm -hmm. and the last one for this round is that the school committee will continue to engage the school and resident communities in its vision for student achievement that's grounded in the belief that first-rate public education is our community's most valuable asset so we had started some communication specifically within the school district last year um, this year we are going to be doing the biennial this is our second year um, the oh, Nicole help me the climate, the, survey. the climate survey the staff climate survey um, so that's a big effort I'm, I'm hoping that you'll work with me on that again thank you um, and that comes out right around the time of MCAS because the teachers have the opportunity to take it while the kids are taking their exam. Um, and then we're going to continue the round tables. Um, once a year we did that, second year, this year was our second year and we got more positive feedback on that. Um, last year everybody was tasked with touring two schools outside of their town, their hometown. So I'm hoping that um, everybody will <coughs> tour all six schools this year. Is there a protocol on how to go about that? We'll ask Superintendent Clenchy to um, get some dates for us and then um, we'll try to move on mass so that we're not killing the principals. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good up. idea. Okay. And, um, and, and we did this last year, although last year was kind of a crazy year. Please bring us students and teachers and administrators and show us what you're doing in the schools because there's so much work that goes on with everyone on the school committee that when we either get into the schools or they come and show us things it's like oh, that's why we're doing what we're doing neil i would think this year especially that one-to-one -one, as it's rolled out now it's the second eighth grade that's coming on more and more that's parents students and so forth in the district are being affected and if we can really um really present to the public just what this all means you know the impact that it's having the difference that it's making if it is I'm, I'm just thinking um, I'm not sure if you if this is what you're talking about but very often throughout the course of the year I would have students um, come and do a presentation at the school at the very first they, they generally would start they kick off the school committee meeting mm -hmm. is that what you've had before yeah yeah would, okay yeah we would have them come in yeah. We also had in, in November, we had sort of like the first generation teachers come in and sort of present some one-to-one -one products that they put together for the classes. Um, and just, it would be nice to get something like that again, just to see how things are evolving within the schools. Thank you. But I, I would also move away from just technology. Like I, I can yeah. see a, a presentation for technology, but I can see other things too. I mean, mm -hmm. as you said, we do so many great things in the school district, and this is a beautiful opportunity to showcase some of that. Show us some of the arts. 
And actually, the, the presentation that Neil referenced with the technology with the Chromebooks last year, it wasn't about the implement, it was about the enablement. That's right. Um, and that's that's really what yeah. I think Neil. Chromebooks a tool, what are they doing what with are they that they doing tool? With? Right. right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one to one, were we going to try to find out how, find a measure of success of some sort for the one to one initiative? I don't think that's our job, I think that's the superintendent's mm -hmm. job. Let, let me think on that. I haven't thought about that, to be honest with you. But good question. Okay, moving forward. So, so where are we with the draft? Anything we missed? Um, flush it out. I think what needs to be done next on this is um, timelines and measurement. And how are we measuring progress? So. Um, anybody that has suggestions specifically on the measurement pieces, will you send me those suggestions? I can do it, but I'd like your input too. So, Lenny, got that for me because I'm going yeah, to get through when a do you lot. Want that by? Pardon? When do you want those timeline progress and how to measure? Just um, before the next school committee meeting. Those, those should be real quick. Just kind of go through it and just give me top of mind stuff. Okay? Okay, old business. So the first item um, is the forensic audit update. So let me tell you where we are because we haven't talked about it at all. Um, John Sullivan from Melanson Heath um, started working with us. When was that, Neil? Summer. It was yeah, the very beginning of the summer. And um, he, um, he's been really busy. <laughs> Um, he has done a great job. He's been working very closely with Pat, or Pat, <laughs> um, very closely with Brooke, myself, and he's been in to meet with Neil and myself um, and Superintendent Clenchy a couple of times. He is extremely thorough and he's, um, he's doing a deeper dive in a couple of areas. Um, and I think that um, when we get when we get down further down the line and he's ready to present to us, I will let you know and he will share his findings with us. Um, but I will tell you that we are on track with the budget allocation that we made. I think that originally he said he could get it done in as short as six weeks, but he has found a couple of additional areas he'd like to do a deeper dive on and that's, that's why it's going to take a little bit more time, but the good news is that we're, we're in the sweet spot of our, our budget allocation. Mm -hmm. So. Very nice man. Very nice man. Yeah. I, I think, what, and I think Neil, you articulated this at one point in time. I, I think what's really good about this is I think he's really going to show us some nice things in terms of moving forward. Right. Uh, some nice patterns, nice trends, and give us some really good suggestions and that we recommendations. Can, yeah, that we can literally implement immediately moving forward. And he's already offered some. In fact, a couple of the policy recommendations that I know, Neil, you you've got them written down. I'll make sure my mine match yours are from him which just, you know, enables us to do things a lot more um, um, efficiently. Okay, facilities update. We're ready. So, so. <laughs> Jeff Converse is our facility, director of facilities, and Jeff started August 1? Yes. I remember that. Yeah. And Jeff has been working incredibly round the clock with Superintendent Clenchy and gotten a lot done. So please take us through it. Let's hold our questions for Jeff until after he's completed it and then we can have a discussion. Right, and I think what I'm going to do is, uh, if it's okay uh, yep. with the chairs, I will, uh, I'm going to take the lead tonight on this. Oh, and right. But we're going to defer to Jeff and Pat. We may defer to you a couple of times uh, as well as we, we walk through this. And Don, if you have any f input, we'd certainly welcome any input from you too, uh, because uh, we've we've kept our town managers, but Don particularly, incredibly well apprised of everything, because so much of the work that we did this summer was in Bolton. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk through. Um, we prepared a, a slideshow uh, just to go through with some talking points, but Jeff and I will um, basically thank you. We'll basically speak to each of these, and um, thank you. And we'll talk about why we did some of the work that we did. Um, I think that we'll we'll go through and show you the work that's been done, but some of the work that's on target or on deck as well for moving forward. 
because as much as we've started some of this, um, some of it still ha is work to, work to do. So when we, we talked about the movement of programs, um, the extended day, this was before really, uh, I just want to do a bit of a tee up on this. We looked at the notion of moving some of the programs where the children were in this building, out of this building, before any real issue of lead or the, the asbestos issue as such, and I, I'm gonna go into some detail on that tonight. Before that kind of came to the foray, I had said to the chairman at that point in time, it, to me, for example, the pre-K, it made sense if I was a school principal here that all pre-K would be together. Programmatically, it makes sense that all pre-K are in that building in one block with the individual that oversees all pre-K. It had really nothing to do with other things. I think in some ways some things have been blown out of proportion. The truth is that pre-K notion was really the notion of programmatically moving all children over there. And then when I took a look at the extended day, I was thinking the same thing. It made sense to me. But as a mom, when I went into that room, it, it felt dark, it felt, it felt sad. I remember saying that, uh, you know, and in fact, Jeff and I had that same discussion. And I thought if we could just find some place that had a bright room, I'd love to move our extended day. So of course, OT and PT, then that would have left that program behind is the only program that stayed in the old Emerson wing. And I thought if we're already moving all the children over there, if we could find room for them too, it would make sense that we just move all children out of this building. And that really was the impetus before I started to hear, well, we've got some lead paint to hear and whatnot. So I'm gonna talk about the extended day first. Um, the extended day when I, we actually had gone into, uh, and this was because we were talking about files one day and where we were keeping our files at, at central office. And it turns out, uh, Lita said, well, we have a lot of our files in padlocked in the freezers. Now, I think this was like day two of the job. And I said, what do you mean freezers? And she said, well, there are freezers and let me take you to show you where these freezers are. So I said, okay. And it was really bright and sunny that day. It was just a beautiful day. And so we walked down, and I, I, I think Vicki was with us that day, as we walked in, and we opened the door, and there's that huge window in that kitchen. And the sun was streaming through, and I said to them, as soon as we walked in, I said, oh my gosh, this is where we could put that extended day. It was bright, it was sunny, it was right off the gymnasium, which they already use. To me, it was one of those moments on time where you thought all of the ducks just aligned. Now, if you had looked at that room at that point in time, we had the old range hood, we had the stove, the broken dishwashers, the sinks that were all corroded that didn't work, that didn't even drain. In fact, the draining had been removed from them. I mean, it was just a disaster, but I can see the beauty of that room. And so we decided, uh, we went through, we got all kinds of bids. I talked to several of you on the side about, this is what I'd like to see. Several of you gave me ideas. And that really was the whole <coughs> rationale behind moving the children out of this building. So the extended day now, and we really it was within hours of school starting that we finished up in that, build, in that room and literally had everything moved in. It was within literally hours, wasn't it? It was, that, that one was the highest stress, I think, trying to get that pushed as quickly as we could. So that's where our extended day is gone, and it's beautiful, and I, I strongly recommend if you've not been down there since the carpet and uh, the little reading nook was created in there and the sun is bright, in fact, so bright that we had to put blinds on the window <laughs> because it was too bright in there, but what a wonderful uh, location. The OTPT, um, again, that was, you're looking at much smaller numbers, uh, you know, when you're looking at that particular program. So there was the old cage at the very back of the gymnasium. And um, I looked at that and it was like the cage, we call it the cage because it has cage doors on it, right? And it didn't have power, uh, it had power to it, but nothing worked. And it didn't have ceiling, it had grids, it had the rails for the ceilings, but there was, there were, most of the grids weren't on there, the ceiling tiles weren't on there. And I looked and I thought, you know what, that could probably be a great OTPT area. And so we looked at that and the room beside it, which was the, an old locker room that was just full of, um, full of stuff. 
and we cleaned that all out and we cleaned out the uh, the old cage and if again if you've not seen that you really need to go down and see what it looks like now and so that is where our OTPT are and these two groups adopted adapted beautifully and that's occupational therapy yes thank you occupational Sorry. therapy physical therapy yeah the pre-K, again, it was one of those moments in time where it just made sense. We had the room, we could send them down, so all pre-K were together. Uh, one of the things that we did was we said, well, if we're getting one room painted, freshly painted for the new pre-K, we might as well paint all of the rooms that are down there. So that all pre-K has a fresh start come September. And so we, we basically had our own teams go through there. It was our staff that did it. We didn't pay for outside entities to come in and paint. We did it ourselves. And so, um, and the same with all the lighting and all that kind of thing. That was our, our gym that, that our own staff that did all that. So they saved us a lot of money by doing it internally as much as we could. The lead paint and asbestos, the lead paint was found, um, and I know this is public knowledge out there that's been bantered about quite a bit, but I just want to speak a little bit more about both the lead paint and the asbestos. So the lead paint <coughs> was found to be in the stairwell where the staff comes in and, it, and in the extended day area, the old extended day area. Now, we don't know, and I know Jeff, you'll correct me if I say anything appropriately, inappropriately here, but we don't know which layer of paint was the lead paint. It could be nine coats underneath. And the only way that it could have been um, a, a hazard was if some some a, a child had scratched and put it into their mouth. So just to be exposed to it as being in the room was not the issue. Um, so that uh, the lead paint uh, basically we we knew that if we move the kids out of the extended day area we could sit back and not rush to get that done. So we have not finished that, and we brought back in Lemay Consulting. And we have now got a certificate, right, that says that we're, that basically we've, we're done, that we, we did exactly what we needed to do. So we're good on that front. The asbestos issue primarily resulted as, uh, uh, due to the fact that we had, we had a major water leak as such in room two down in Emerson. And the pipes literally run the perimeter of the building and they're all encased in cement. And so if you have a leak, there's a chance that you might not notice that for a while. So by the time we found it, we had some, lead, uh, some mold that we had to clean up, but in order to shut it off, we had to get to a valve in the hallway, a shut off valve in the hallway just outside of the office in Emerson. And that was not flaking or anything, but we knew it had asbestos. We had to remove it in order to shut it off in order to fix the leak and I think that has been blown out of proportion. It was just a small area that we needed to take care of in order to fix the leak, which had no asbestos involved with that. Well, I think what would be helpful too is, was this shutoff valve above the ceiling tiles? Where? Yes, it, it was. was. So it was above the ceiling tiles. So, and Jeff, you have to help here because I'm no expert. I don't even know what I don't know about it, but if, I thought what I heard was if it's not disturbed, it's not a hazard. It's when it's disturbed that it becomes. Can you explain yeah, that? Because absolutely. I think that's important for people. And I'm to not know. an expert either, but as, so a, con as, a, as, as a general contractor, uh, it's true. Every Asbestos is, it was used, it was the next best thing back in the day. There's asbestos in a lot of old properties and homes. Uh, it's, it's safe, it does its job, but they found that it can be uh, hazardous if it's uh, if it's damaged or if it's removed without the proper um, precautions. So we uh, we know that it's it's in the in the trades it's common knowledge. Nobody wants to touch asbestos. Plumber doesn't want to touch it. He doesn't want to be the one to expose himself. So it's common practice that if you identify it as as asbestos, there's a, there's a series of tests that and, and professionals that come in and, and make sure that it's remediated. Okay. And that's exactly how we approached it. And we also had state, the state inspector was on site. In fact, the state inspector made us build a wall that we didn't realize that we had to build. Mm -hmm. And that wall was in place for maybe two weeks or something like that. So I mean, we literally did everything by the book on this. So, we, uh, so that was an area of asbestos. There was also another small leak in the kitchen. 
and that had an area of asbestos and again they came and did that all appropriately they tended it all appropriately we had inspectors come as soon as it was done to make sure that everything had been done i'm not talking to the state inspectors beyond the state inspectors come in and make sure that everything had been done exactly as it should have been done so so that's kind of the rest of the story with the lead paint and the asbestos can, can i yeah. at this point just ask a couple quick questions sure. on this because this was something again that's that's kind of gone through a little bit of social media of the town and so forth and I think it's really important that we get the message correct because I, I think that there's unintentional <coughs> misinformation that's out there so very specifically on the lead paint there were no signs that children were scratching and eating the lead paint absolutely is no. that correct okay. that's correct and it um, wasn't flaking and it was not no, flaking it was not okay. flaking at the asbestos the areas that you're talking about um, my impression in looking at at least one of those areas they're very small areas very small they were completely out of the mainstream they weren't broken apart there was no airborne particles in addition to that we've had air quality checks mm -hmm. um, to verify that the children did not have any exposure to these small isolated areas is right. that correct that's, Thank you, Neil. That's really really appreciate Thank you doing you. that. So room two is where the water leak was, um, and we uh, we had Surf Pro come in and clean that up. That took about a week for them to come in, and uh, then we were able to uh, go back in and finish, put everything back together again, and put some new carpet in there. And it's it's good as new. It really is as good as new right now. Uh, new light standards of Sawyer, uh, th the lights that were down there, one of them was particularly damaged and these are the tall light standards down uh, right out in front of the building, uh, like, the, like the parking lot. And one was knocked over this winter by a plow, and, but Jim came forward and said, you know, the truth is the others are really so uh, rusted. He said, I'm really worried about them. I didn't think that we wanted to take a chance, so we just replaced them all, so it made sense. We were able, we didn't replace them to be the identical light because that was too expensive, so we just literally, for the same cost, bought all three brand new lights, and those have now all been inst installed, and uh, they look great down there. The Emerson Building Boiler Replacement, I, I think, Jeff, I'm going to turn this over to you uh, to, to just bit of, give a bit of an update. And again, I want to thank Don for all of his help and support with all of this because we, we had discussion. There's nothing up here that Don would say, gee, that's a surprise to me because we've talked through absolutely everything. You're not done for with the slide yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't got to the wastewater yet. I'd like to point that out. <laughs> The Emerson Building boiler replacement, I mean, and, and Don, I don't know if you've got any input that you'd like to, to offer at this point. I certainly don't mean to put you on the spot, but we've had a lot of discussion on this. And I think at the end, and I know, Neil, both you and Lynn, you've both uh, also done a bit of a tour and seen uh, seen the boiler itself. Bottom line is we, we need to replace that. It, it's not even a question. So I think we're, we're in a good place to do that. But maybe, Jeff, just talk about the last uh, bid, if you, if you can, about... Uh, your thoughts on that? Sure. Um, so the Emerson boiler, which is a steam boiler for that functions for just this part of the property, the 1922 building, and it and it and it it's a steam boiler, so it's re relatively unique. It um and it, it heats the all three floors, the first second, the first floor, the second floor, and the lower level of the of the property. Um, when I started, there was a lot of talk about the boiler and you know what we were going to do. And I went down and I took a look at it, and you know I've replaced a lot of boilers over the years, and this one is really in tough shape. And um, there was water coming out of it, and it wasn't on, and there wasn't a lot of there was no pressure. And we all went down and took a look at it, and we even had Harold come in from the DPW, and he took a look at it and got on the phone right away and started wanting to talk about it. So I think. Um, once you see it, you can see that it's really not worth throwing good money in to keep it going because it's a section boiler. So there's six sections to it, and you can replace sections as you need to. In this one, there's six sections of a six section boiler that's corroded and water coming out of it. Um, so what we've done is we've uh, gone out and, uh, you know, it, with, with Harold and the DPWs, um, you know, some advice from them and what they would like to see. Uh, started getting some boiler replacement quotes, and they're coming in. The the a lot you know, um, Royal Steam would be one company. Another company that we got a quote from was um, 
That's all right. We don't know. Energy efficiency the is another company. Just the, I think they just need the, the ballpark range of yeah, the, the price. Just for how much cost. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the prices are coming in right now, uh, right around uh, thirty-four thousand. So it's uh, between thirty-one and thirty-five. So how does that get paid for? Do we know? Well, and I, I you know, Don and I've had this discussion uh, multiple times, and I think at this point in time, I mean. This would be my suggestion, Don. Feel free to weigh in if you think that I'm missing something. I think we just need to get it fixed. So the, the, the first thing is that we need to get it fixed. I guess then it would be our challenge as a school district to go back to our landlord and say, okay, you own the buildings. I'm, I'm, I'm being very gracious as I say this. I hope that it's taken in the spirit and what it's, which it's intended. You own the buildings. This is probably the town's bills to pay for the boiler. Um, and we would hope that you would reimburse us, uh, you know, in, in whatever form that looks like. So I think it would behoove us then to go to the town and ask for reimbursement, particularly of, of this. Would that be fair and reasonable? I think, that's a, I think that's a fair comment. I mean, we've had these discussions privately, and I'm thinking, you know, and we discussed Monday, you know, Jeff was working on getting the pricing and so forth. So what, what I'm envisioning is probably the first selectmen's meeting in October will be ready to I mean, we'll have some pretty good information by then on on that what we're going to talk about next and uh, perhaps a couple of other things so I think the first selectmen's meeting in October will be time to to really get into that because depending on what the town and, and I can't make commitments for the selectmen but what does what the selectmen ultimately um, decide to support as far as payment goes uh, it's possible you know it's I'm not saying it's a sure thing but it's possible we would need a special town meeting in November to make those appropriations uh, there could be other avenues to pursue but um, but it's it's a possibility so uh, but the but the clearly the town is the landlord and I would say the tenant would not normally have to pay for a new boiler uh, now I would say that if it was a very if it was a very new boiler, and for whatever reason it would get gotten it had deteriorated quickly more quickly than it should have, I think that's a separate com uh, conversation. But the fact is, this boiler is about 25 to 30 years old, and what happened 15 years ago, as just described, it the center section was replaced. So that that section is 15 years old, but the boiler itself is much older than that. It's effectively reached the end of its useful life. Uh, I completely agree with what Jeff said in that um, there was water coming out of it and it wasn't turned on. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's odd. And I called Harold while Jeff and I were there. He came over in about five minutes and he got, on the, he got down on his knees, looked in underneath and he said, this water is not coming from where there's a seam. So, and it's a high pressure steam water. So I think it's, um, you know, I would, I would not have wanted to say, well, let's roll the dice and try to get one more year out of it because, the, the, you know, I just don't think that would be a prudent decision. And I, I, I certainly at safety first, because we don't have a crystal ball. We can't say whether or not we would have problems with it this year. Even if there wasn't, you know, a result of something from the high pressure, it could fail. And we're in heating season. If it fails and it takes four or six weeks to get a new boiler in, we have major issues. So I absolutely think it's, I mean, we've had the same attitude through all of this. Let's work on getting things done, and then let's go back and look at how all of this should be paid, should be paid for, uh, assuming there's going to be a good faith effort on the part of the school district and on the part of the town. But, uh, I agree completely. So is it typical that you would get three bids? Yes. Okay. Lynn, I, have, I have one more bid coming in. Okay. Um, actually, I thought I was going to have it today for this meeting, but I didn't. Okay, all right. Well, that's okay. We, we trust you to do your job. I know you're dying to say something, <laughs> no, so just, say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just afraid that you're going to replace the boiler because the boiler is really, really old. And so are all these pipes. And I, I'm i just afraid that replacing the boiler is just going to lead to, okay, now all the pipes have to be replaced. Because the steam, is, my understanding, is very, very corrosive. And there didn't seem to be any softener or anything that would help that corrosion at all down there. And I. I think that replacing the boiler is just going to open up. Well, we got to do something, right? I mean, we can't keep going with what we have. It sounds like. Uh, what you know? What 
I hear what you you know a lot more about this than last week, other than you know everybody else in the room, maybe Mark. Um, can you just take a look at the pipes and that because that actually is a decent that's a, that's a really good comment that if the I mean, it's not just the fixture, right? It's the things that attach to it. Just have a point of view for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. I, I can actually add to that. To I was going to say, we had a little bit of that discussion, too. Yeah. So, Lynn, you're not coming out of left field with the discussion. No, and you're absolutely yeah. right, right? The it, We have to heat this building somehow, and it's a steam system. We can't replace it with a hot water system. It, it, that would be even more costly. So we have to put a steam system in. Um, the, so the quotes we started getting were replaced with like kind which would be take what we have and put another one in. Last year, they, they, their decision couldn't be made, so um, you can pour a filler in, and it goes inside, and it fi as it's leaking out, it finds the hole and it seals up that hole. They did it last year. They, they, no one thought it was actually gonna last the whole year, and it did. The ceiling now is, because there's no pressure, it's just worn away and the water's coming back out again. When we started this process of, of, um, of collecting bids, we were getting like-kind bids to replace exactly what we have with what we have. And keep to keep the prices down, they wanted to keep the existing pipes as much as they could, the existing controls. Um, they weren't pricing power or electricity because we have an electrician on staff. So those were all the things that were coming in. Recently, <coughs> excuse me, we started, um, I asked the question to another vendor. And actually, the vendor who I am, am really interested in his bid said, I'm not interested in replacing with like kind. I don't want the job if you're going to put in another one of those boilers. That's not the right boiler. It's not the right application. And gave me a price to replace all the pipes, put it up on a pad so that it's not sitting on the ground in the water that it's leaking or it's coming in the door. They're going to replace all the electric. They're going to replace all the mm -hmm. controls. So the price that I have, which is the thirty-four thousand only three thousand dollars more than what everybody else is saying to just? Put oh, it that's in. the thirty-four. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to tell them. Before. No, oh. <laughs> the, the, the price the price is only three thousand dollars more to put in one that is, and I'm going to do a little bit more research into it. But they're telling me the right kind to put in for this application. They don't feel it's pitched correctly, so that's why we're getting water back in that's corroding the unit. We also in these quotes, um, and a lot of these quotes were coming in before I started. But one of them was to, ha um, to rebuild a trap. And the only reason you need a trap is when the water comes back in, it can fall into that elbow and not get back in the unit. Um, this, this, this company said, you don't need the trap rebuilt because it's not pitched correctly and the water shouldn't be coming in in the first place. So that's where I am with this boiler. So I think that I'm getting prices on somebody looking outside the box for exactly the, the concerns that you have. Okay. Yeah. So if you're without getting into the weeds here, if you're looking to replace all the pipes, why are we even looking at a steam system at that point? Why are we looking oh, at Oh, no, yeah, all the pipes would, when, all the pipes, there's a lot of pipes. We're right. talking about just the, in that mechanical room, the pipes that come down into it. Once they reach the ceiling. Oh, I would ceiling, almost assume that that would be replaced no. with any, really? No. Okay. No, black so, pipe and threading black pipe is a big job. Right, that's why it yeah, really yeah. surprised me you said that. Um, are there any known leaks in any of the the pipes that go that throughout to the, it? the no that that actually go throughout <laughs> the, the school here the rooms so, not not any known um, however like the and the, the the leak that we found in the floor is very common it happened I, it, over the years I've I've had a, a lot of different leaks in a concrete floor just because it's it's in concrete it's corrosion uh, frost heaves movement whatever so it's not unlikely that something like that happens in the floor but we don't have any history on any sort of leakage uh, from this steam system anywhere in the building. And if it did, it's easily fixed because it's easy to get to. Right. I, I've had systems replaced and, and <coughs> without having to replace all the steam pipes is, mm -hmm. it was where I'm going. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the steam pipes are going to fall apart. If there's no. known issues, it could right. no. exacerbate those problems. Just the ca It's the cast iron corrodes fast and that's where you get. these. These I think the lifespan that you had, the, the you know, I think it's done what it's supposed to do. Hey, can I, can I, move, can I yeah. continue to move on? I'm going to try to yeah. talk quick oh. here because I want to make sure that we get through everything. Um, Emerson ongoing space adjustments. That's What's just CO? a central office. <laughs> a <Okay>. central office. <laughs> uh, that's just, and again, I am going to start to talk quickly because I, I want to get through. We've got so much to get through. Um, that was just 
reconfiguring re our central office area. And that too, I always I talked to Don before we did anything uh, like the SPED area, moving the SPED upstairs, moving the, set of the superintendent's <coughs> office across a hallway, human resources here, and business offices stayed where it is. And so um, again, we did, we did some adjustments with that. Rekeying is happening in this building, um, just for the perimeter door, so I just want to put that on your radar. And then, of course, let's talk white water and wastewater. And uh, that really should have said wastewater rather than white water, but maybe, Don, um, I'm going to defer to you if that's okay on this particular project. We, Don and I had some really good discussion, and I think at the end, I thought that we thought we would take the boiler project on if the town could take the lead on the wastewater. So that's kind of where we've left it. Don, do you want to add a comment or two on that? Uh, certainly. Um, well, again, uh, that, that wastewater treatment facility was built in 2008, as I recall, and the town owns it. Uh, it wasn't built by the district, it was built by the town. It was, the project was managed by the town. And um, Harold Brown, the DPW director, has, uh, has expertise in many areas. Um, he's extremely competent in being able to manage something like this. I told him two or three weeks ago, I think it was, that um, I wanted him to take the lead on this. That you know, it was, it, it was, I thought it was only right that the town take the lead on this. Um, Seems as though he had a bit of a mental lapse because when he was in a super, uh, he was a, in a meeting with a superintendent a, a few days ago where it came up, and I guess he'd forgotten that I told him that I wanted him to do that. So I, I reinforced that today. Did so you? Okay? We are back on track there. Um, he is going to be making a visit to a similar facility in the area uh, to see what they've got for um, pumps because that's the root cause of the problem. That it was a design flaw apparently from the beginning and didn't have the right size pumps in there. So the pumps need to be replaced. The tracks upon which the pumps move, I guess, need to be replaced. Um, and we and we need that, we, we need quotes on that fairly quickly, again, for the same deadline, you know, because if we are gonna have a special town meeting, I mean, I said, if we have one, it's a big if, but if we have one, it would probably be mid-November, because once you get into the holiday season between Thanksgiving and Christmas or New Year's, it's tough to, Get people to come out because there's so much going on. Well, the good news is we're not on a deadline where we have to get that work done by a certain date. I mean, it needs to be fixed, and it can be done while school is in session, right? Which is a big deal. So we can get it done. We're not going to drag our feet, but we're not going to rush to get it done either. So if we found out that you know we need more information uh, to make sure this is done right, then we could fit a November deadline with all the posting and advertising we need to do for a special town meeting. We could do it mid-January. My strong preference would be to do it in, no in November if that's what we need, but my stronger preference is to make sure we do it right. So uh, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be beholden to the calendar. I want to make sure that it's done correctly. But uh, yes, the town will absolutely take the lead on it. And um, the point that I started to make um, a few topics ago that I, I, I would like to, to make now is that uh, and I know the school district knows this, certainly the superintendent knows this, but um, the school district has been, and Superintendent Clunchy and her staff have been really, really good to work with on this. They've been very proactive. Uh, we have focused on, as a team, getting things done and dealing with who's gonna pay for what later. Um, and um, I mean, it couldn't be, it, we, we've got off, I think, on, on definitely on the right foot. Uh, the, the school district has been nothing but helpful on this, and um, and I just want to say that that none of this, none of this that we're trying to deal with now is the making of anybody is is the, is wasn't caused by anybody who 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 was who was on board here. So um, we as a town need to take certain responsibilities. The district has taken certain responsibilities, and I just want to thank. Superintendent, Superintendent Clenchy and her team for being as proactive as they've been. Thank you. Thank you, Don. That means a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, I will go through some other things quickly. Thank goodness Stowe has great buildings over there, so we have not spent a huge amount of time over there. So Stowe and Lancaster will go much more quickly than Bolton. Mm -hmm. Keen. Re Keen? I'm just wondering. Oh, she wants to know why Re Keen is building. Because it's time. Yes. It's I always think a good I, idea to periodically. Yeah, I, I, I think Lancaster's so. Town Hall was repeated at some point. Just 
there, there are lots of master keys out there and such, and we just need to get it rekeyed. Okay. So, so uh, regular ongoing maintenance. There was nothing huge in, in Stowe this summer, uh, but we did do a lot of regular ongoing maintenance, and their staff was outstanding over there. Uh, concrete work got done at center, which was fabulous, and um, there was just there was a lot of doors and sagging and concrete that had broken up and such. And I give their uh, their town a lot of credit because they made the move in and made sure that this got fixed this summer, and it just looks fabulous. Uh, we did have a boiler repair at Hale. They did some regasketing over there, so that is all complete as well. The high school, uh, regular, oh my goodness, we did a lot of ongoing maintenance, and I'm sure Kim could probably speak to that as much as anybody can, and Nick, you can too. I mean, it's just, it's looking great over there. Not as far along as we would have liked it to be, but it's looking fabulous. Um, uh, lots of painting. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Is that hole in the ceiling fix? It is. Go. Go down that you can take. You can thank yes. your superintendent, yeah. <laughs> the director of facilities, <laughs> and the the, uh, the egg that was on the window for three years is now gone <laughs> too. Yeah, you know what I'm talking that's about. Right, 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 right. Yes. <laughs> so that's also gone now too. So yes, we were very very busy in your school. Um, the fire pump. Uh, Jeff, can you talk two seconds about the fire pump and? Uh, where we're at with that. Sure, the fire pump for the school is in a cement, uh, concrete bunker, the bottom of it uh, sitting on the concrete, corroded to the point where it was not really solid, so we replaced the base to it, and that's it. Thank you. Oil tank, Jeff, you wanna take that one too? Yeah, the oil tank is another, uh, it's in a concrete uh, base, it's, it's, a, it's actually an above ground tank that we put in a bunker, a concrete bunker, and the concrete bunker has corroded the uh, the ties to it, so um, it's also not a watertight bunker. So when it rained, it filled with water, and this buoyant oil tank pulled up and the caused problems. So we uh, <laughs> we just you know we've been doing a lot of work on that. Continue but to do a lot. Continuing, of work. that's an ongoing saga, but we're we're well on our way with that. We're feeling good about that too. Uh, Lancaster, uh, there are ongoing moisture issues that we're dealing with on a regular basis right now. That may come back a, a little bit differently for us this year. We are reaching out to MSBA for some help and guidance on that. Um, and I know that you took over, so, uh, you bought a, a pile of new dehumidifiers to take over there I bought, as well. Yes, I, I bought a few uh, dehumidifiers to put in the classes. Uh, doors are problemat problematic over at Lancaster uh, for closing and such and some shifting. And I, I think we would just want you to know that we're onto that and doing some work with that area. We're also rekeying Lancaster. District-wide, we did the parking lot cleanup, so they're all clean now, including yours. I'd like to point out twice. We actually ended up doing the high school twice, but it, I went there one night after. It was, it was like so clean you could eat off the parking lot. That's how clean it was that night after the second time round. Uh, but it looks fabulous. The oil tank inspections district-wide have all been done and are current now. Um, water testing has been ongoing. Um, and what, what we found is that uh, every, every town has different testing, uh, I, I guess, um, I think Center, for example, I think is once a week, for example, and every, they're all on different routines. And so just to try to get into a, where, where we're all at, but I think, Jeff, you've done some great work on that, so I think we're in a good place for our water testing right now. And I know that we were scheduled to have our lead and minerals testing, I think, in next month, but I think that we've buffed it up, and I think we're just waiting on the results right now. Is that right? Yep. Thank you. Um, additional miscellaneous items, we, we've been working at blinds, putting blinds up, particularly uh, uh, just for emergency procedures. I just want our chief to know that we're on top of that because that we didn't have blinds where we should have had them, so we're doing, we are taking care of that, particularly at the high school. Uh, yeah, your building's getting a lot of attention right now, Nick. Uh, preventative, maintenance, <laughs> preventative maintenance, we're drafting up all kinds of plans and procedures on that. Window washing has happened, as you know, again, some at the high school, uh, and we've done some surplus removal of just stuff that need, we needed to get, to get rid of. Building of records and files, this is, um, again, I'm, this is, specific tonight to facilities, but when I talk about it with my entry plan, I'm gonna talk about it district-wide. Um, but certainly I think of the facilities is, a, is probably in one of the, the worst conditions, I guess, for having legacy or being able to just go and pick up a contract or going to pick up, it, it, they're just not there. And so it's 
we've done a lot of work. I know you and Janet have been working overtime in this area, as has Pat, and trying to pull things together and, and uh, re rebuild, if you will, some, some files and records in that area. Uh, I know that we, for example, all of our vehicles, and we've, you've done a really nice job of creating a nice Excel sheet on that and filling in, so we know exactly where every vehicle is, we know exactly where all the documentation is for every vehicle, all of that is all coming together beautifully right now, so we're, we're doing a lot of work in that area as well. I want to apologize again. I, I appreciate that we didn't do my entry plan tonight because I knew this was going to be so long, and I'm so sorry, but we did, we did a lot. We really did a lot. And I, I think, uh, Pat, I, I would want to make sure that I recognize Pat. I know Richard MacLeon, when he was with us, also, uh, he and Pat would meet with me every day. I mean, um, and, and then when Jeff came in, he meets with me every day right now, and mo sometimes multiple times during the day because this was a, an enormous amount of work to accomplish in a very truncated time period. And prepping the schools and getting them ready for that first day back was no small task for us. So I think I come to you tonight, I feel very, very good about the work that we've accomplished and hats off to people like Pat and Jeff who were able to make so much of this happen. Uh, so Jeff, I'm not sure, am I missing anything that you can think of or Pat, I, I toss it out to you. No? Okay. Um, so it's clear that a new superintendent comes into a district and <laughs> in the summer, I think that's what I think it was coming. Um, yeah, and, uh, oh, yeah, thanks. In the summer, and the focus is for two months, I got two months and I got to get the schools open. And Superintendent Clinch comes in and says, I got two months, I got to get, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, the amount of work. Um, thank you very much for the incredible amount of work that your folks have had to take on and several of them in brand new positions. So learning the district, Pat, you knew the district, but picking up additional responsibility, doing your job, working so respectfully with our town officials, the town administrator, the DPW, the chief of police, as well as the other towns really yeah. means a lot to us because you're a reflection of our community. So thank you for that. Jennifer, you have questions, and I know, Neil, you have a question too, but Jen, we'll go Just ahead. Just about Lancaster, they, when we met a long time ago, the Finance Subcommittee with the um, Food Services Director, he mentioned that at some point in the fairly near future, Lancaster's going to need to replace the uh, walk-in freezer at Mary Rollins. Okay. So, would you look into that and just yeah, see where we absolutely. are with that and what that's for? Because that's something that's going to be a big Sure, and, and actually I did do a follow-up after our discussion and I went back and I, I, I spoke with the food services director and he said other than that one incident this summer, we, we haven't had any others since. Okay. But Jeff can certainly follow that sure. up. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so thank you once again for Brooke and Jeff and everybody who's been involved in this because this has just been you know a shocker for us. The day you walked in, you got hit over the head with this, and this is not what I'm sure you were thinking when you first started, that this is what you'd be dealing with all summer. Um, there are certain things that um, I'm just wondering, are you going to be revisiting and then possibly talking to, depending upon, you know, some evolving things and so forth with regards to, like, say, surplus removal or, um, like building of records and files because those those are things that I think are you know important things that the um so I, I guess to you I'm not sure if this is the answer to the question yeah. but from my lens this is just where we sit tonight this what you got tonight is a snapshot of facilities because there was so much to be right. done this summer right. but from my lens right now this is not over with okay. I mean in, in terms of surplus is a I, you know, we've got, as you know, we've got areas mm. outside that we need to clean up. Right. We've got vehicles that are sitting out there that need to be taken away, and, and um, we've we've got lots of that. So I mean, that's an issue, still an issue for us. And you'll hear us come back and report out to you again throughout the course of the year of where we're at with some of this. Uh, with the files, I mean, uh, that that's something that you're going to hear more about again when I talk about my entry plan. Tonight we're just talking facility files, but I, when I come back to talk about the entry plan, I'm going to talk to you about other areas of um, where files are minimal. And that's been a real, that has been a real challenge for us 
um, especially as new folks coming in and not having the legacy there mm -hmm. was a challenge for us. But I think that we've handled it. I'm very proud of how we've handled it. You know, uh, but but there's a lot of work that we need to do. And like I said tonight, there was only so much time, and I already felt I already felt so badly about sure. the amount of time this has taken. So if there's anything that that along the way is determined through records and files and so forth, that would be revisited at a later point. Absolutely. Okay. Mark has a question. Thank you. Yeah, I wonder if either of you can characterize the kinds of files and records that you would hope to see that apparently are not present or misfiled or something like that. <laughs> That you would ordinarily, <laughs> that you ordinarily would expect to see as an incoming facilities director. Sure, I, I think. Well, you know what? I think rather than going down that road, let me take a stab at this, Jeff, and then if you want to do sure you'll something, be fine. <laughs> if you want to do something different, I mean. So, for example, what would have been nice is if we had come in and there was a say a filing cabinet for Bolton a filing cabinet for Stowe, a filing cabinet for Lancaster. And you could go in and you could say, um, and then maybe district-wide. And so for a district-wide, for example, you could pull out the file and say, oh, there are all our vehicles, There's there are all the titles, there are the insurance, there are the inspection reports, There's everything is in, in that file. Um, Lancaster, for example, you could have gone to the a folder that had something to do, for example, the freezers, or all the major, whatever the, the major dollar items are in Lancaster and you could go back and say oh there it is you know what the warranty ran out or there was no warranty or we've got nothing on this but you know there would be stuff there but there there isn't that kind of thing um, or contracts I mean that's another one you know uh, for example like uh, you know when we were dealing with Bolton with the, the, the wastewater and, and going back after a co that particular contract and then realizing that that contract was really not in existence because the contract was in fact what, two years out of date. March 2014, it expired. Thank you. You know, so what was what was really good, and Don, I hear what you're saying, uh, and I appreciate your kind words tonight. But what was really good for us was we could sit down with somebody like Don and say, and Pat will often sat in on those meetings as well. And as a team, we would sit there and say, okay, here's where we're at. What do we do now? And so it was really nice. We never felt like we were alone in this, but it was a challenge for us to go back after finding these things. So these are these are what you when you when you mentioned the building of records and files. There were files and contracts and records that you would typically expect to be there, and you aren't. You haven't found them. No, we didn't. Okay. And that doesn't mean that they didn't exist. But, um, you know, when, when we would ask uh, about them, what we were told is we, did, we didn't, in this particular, I'm just talking facilities tonight, mm -hmm. we were told, well, we didn't keep files. And so that, that became a challenge for us because we, you did, we didn't have the legacy to go back to. I, we're not complaining, we're just saying it created more Well, of a you should for complain because I would complain. We're, we're not complaining, we're just doing... Sorry. Just the, just the state of the nation, it's a fact you have to deal with. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, would that be fair and reasonable to say on that yeah. topic? And, and I, so I, I think what we're trying to create is, you hit the nail on the head when you said that you're trying to create something so that the next group of people that come in can just sit down and get it. We don't have that, we're creating that. Yep. So are we. So we're all in this yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on facilities <laughs> tonight? No. Are we good? We're good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jeff. You. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Pat, for all of your work this summer. Much appreciated. Okay, the policy subcommittee. Wow, you guys. You want to? I'm going to turn it over to Susan. Yes. Well, and gang. I, I, I think you're going to be surprised when I tell you. So <laughs> oh, no! What did you do? Well, well, we we talked and we discussed the contract, right? And then we also started to talk about. Um, the the norms and we weren't sure about whether or not that was something that you had delegated to the policy subcommittee so we wanted a little more clarification on whether or not I haven't but yes okay <laughs> <laughs> we sort of suspected that that's that will help me because I'm going to okay, work so on yeah okay great um, Lynn make sure you put that one down <laughs> they're doing the norms okay and then um, and then uh, we we did we started going through that agenda but every policy seemed to go back to um the mask the mask stuff so yeah. looking looking over whether or not maybe or sort of tabling it to see the, what the mask although susan i think there's some of the changes on some of these policies i think 
we need to make. Yes, well, the, the you mean the ones that the are policies in the for second reading? We didn't talk about tonight. Oh, so these are good. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say that the. Okay. okay. So yeah. Oh. No, I guess I skipped ahead on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the. Sorry. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. You've got 11 yeah. policies. Yes. In the packet. That's where we're at right now. Right. Okay. So do you want us to? Are so these, uh, I, I wait. I want to make sure <laughs> there's a, not a disconnect here. I think that there's a disconnect. No. Nope. Well, I think she's there I was think we're all back on her. Yes. Except she's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. These are the so second reading policies. So these are all ones policies. that we had discussed prior to tonight's meeting. Oh, okay. At that, so that see, so, <laughs> so I am the one. <laughs> it's all right. We're all over the okay. place. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I guess um, I'm not sure. Being new as the chair for the policy, we well, got the you got the experts sitting what, next to yeah, you. Yeah. What my role <laughs> is in presenting these to you? I mean, they're there in the packet, right? And um, does anybody have? Let's do them one by one. Yeah. Okay. Very so policy. So there there weren't any more changes. No, there. Nope. Last time we presented them to you, it was for the first reading, and there was really no discussion after that. Um, if you wanted any changes from what is presented here, so this is the second reading, and we're hoping that they are going to be adopted this evening. So, do you? Does anybody have any questions on any of the policies and the um, edits of those policies? They've already gone through policy and been right. read a first time by the school. Right. Party. So this is just. So if we do them all together and say, does anybody have anything? And if they don't, then gotcha. make yourself a motion <laughs> for 11 policies. I'm so impressed with this work. So. Nicole, you want to make a motion? Discussion? No discussion? No discussion? Nope. Nope. We're all good. Then I move that the school committee adopt policy B E D G. B G B G B. These are new glasses. I swear to God. <laughs> B G C B C F B I A B I B A B I D B J C H and C H C. Second. All right. And second, Jennifer is always jumping in. And all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you so much Sorry for, for the your work. There was, don't be sorry. We got a lot of policy stuff going on. This I think it's going to be the year of policy. Okay, subcommittee reports. Mr. Dossi. Uh, yes, we met um, and uh, started to uh, talk a little bit about the development of our goals for this year. Um, some of the things that we talked about um, is that we're going to be creating a list of. Um, like a thoughtful list of finance related policies in conjunction with the policy subcommittee that um, based on need basically and using other successful district models to expand transparency throughout the district budget. Um, this is most likely going to probably end up as one of our goals too. Uh, we're searching various districts to find models for financial reports again in order to increase transparency and ensure that the school committee has access to accounts that until now have frankly gone unreported. Uh, this will be one of our goals for sure. Um, each report that's requested is going to be vetted for its true effectiveness. We're going to first qualify the justification of our report requests with a narrative of why it's needed and what impact on the transparency and budget understanding it would make to either have or not have the information. Uh, we've committed to work with the administration of creating proper timelines or timeliness uh, for any of these reports and for the gathering um, of the right information uh, for these reports to have impact. And lastly, we began to look into some clarity for the technology program in the schools with relation to establishing baselines for current equipment, infrastructure, and catalog procedures, uh, and hope to create an understanding of how the needs reflect the technology plan and the superintendent's vision for the district. Thank you. Yes. Any questions for Neil? I have one question about something that came up in the finance subcommittee. It, it wasn't on the agenda, so I'm assuming you cannot, you're not ready for us to make any allocation for that boiler, because we talked about the school committee <coughs> voting a budget for that. Yeah, I think, actually we had talked about it, and I think we decided, now Neil, perhaps you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we need a motion from you tonight, do we? No. No. I think we looked into Anything that. over 50. And I, I think that we don't, I think we're good to go with it. No. As long as it stays under the threshold. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. And Pat had also, um, put forward for a special waiver for us so that we could get it as soon as we can possibly get it in. But we're making sure we're doing the due diligence. It's that balance between doing the due diligence and getting it getting done. It done. Yeah. 
winter is coming. Yeah. <laughs> and we're feel we're feeling that too. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I do have an edit on a policy. Mm. We just passed it. Yeah, we just passed What's it. the policy? Sorry. We can, we can Never mind. Something. Moving on. It's not the uh, Wow. It's the first one since we came back. It's on the minutes. We can go. <laughs> okay. Neil's good. <laughs> personnel. Kathy. Okay. We had a, um, uh, a brief personnel subcommittee meeting mm -hmm. on August uh, 26th, uh, basically uh, to get organized to set our dates to speak briefly with Ms. Clenshi about um, her goals. She did submit a self-evaluation to us. Um, we're meeting next Monday, so we'll have more on that. We'll have to come up with a time for the um, personnel subcommittee to present the, the process, the superintendent's plan and the process. Um, and uh, yeah, we just met briefly. That was the, the, and I'll have more to report the next time. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, policy. Okay, here you are. <laughs> Do I need to repeat? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? <laughs> so, so we did look at several policies, but we decided that it was in our best interest to wait oh. until the mass. Oh, see, now that makes sense. But we, and then we questioned whether or not we were supposed to work on establishing the norms. And now yes, we're you're establishing the norms. Yes. Um, so, how what, what do you, when are you, how often are you meeting? Every two weeks? It's I think right now it's scheduled. Yes. Yeah. I think the schedule set. Already. So can you have a draft of the norms in? Well, they need it soon. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it will, will nope. be a lot of work no. to do. Can you, can you have it by the next meeting? Mm -hmm. the next meeting well, well, we're not meeting place. until right before the next meeting. So. Oh, I see. Before I think meeting. you need to, yeah. So give us twelve. Give us a month. Okay. We'll, we'll get it done in policy at our next meeting. Okay. And thank then, you. She knows. <laughs> and then we'll have it for the school committee. So we'll perfect. Up. Drafted prior to the next meeting. We'll discuss then. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And Mark. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, the advisory committee has not yet met. I'm aware the Stowe person was reappointed in August, and I am not entirely certain if um, the Lancaster person is going to be appointed. Yes, she, she is. Cheryl? She is. Cheryl's she has been, been appointed, appointed now. So you have all so your So we now groups. have people if the Bolt person has been reappointed. Yeah. So oh. we should be enabled to meet. One second. Brian, I think you guys have to get back together and reappoint the Bolton um, advisory member to the Bolton audit advisory member to the school committee. Okay, which is a joint selectman and finance or advisory committee appointment. Okay, we'll get you the yeah. information. We'll, we can add that to the agenda for the advisory selectman. Okay, yeah. thanks. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Um, okay. So um, I anticipate either later September or early October there'll be beginning conversations about um, having doing a search for an, a uh, and bidding for a new audit. New auditor, or potentially the same auditor, I guess. Um, but a process, uh, a process for putting out to bid our audit in the final, um, Please, at yeah. the end of this fiscal year. Yep, perfect. That's good. Okay, and now it's up to Superintendent Clutchy. So I will just go through and give a brief report, and then if you've got some questions, and I'll go into greater detail uh, when we talk about the entry plan. But just to apprise you of a couple of uh, key things that, that we're working on outside of facilities because there's almost that penchant for thinking that that's all we're dealing with uh, although it's a big piece of our lives it's not the only piece of our lives so I just want to kind of go through some of the other work that that uh, we're doing right now the MCAS uh, process this year will be different for grades 4 and grade 8 and uh, so they are expected to be computer generated uh, testing this year and that's uh, as per the commissioner um, there will be very few exceptions across the state and I know that we won't qualify for a waiver so we've struck an ad hoc group that is working because I want to make sure that our teachers and our administrators and our students are prepared for this so we've got an ad hoc committee that's working on that um, educator evaluation a new topic uh, educator evaluation has had some work done on it and I think Laura and Ross have 
uh, done an outstanding job, uh, our principals, in helping to guide some of the process. But we've got a couple of gaping holes that we're going after. We had an excellent uh, principals meeting this morning and uh, we've got a couple of different areas that we need to look at. First of all, I think for the educator evaluation component, so that's really the teacher's component, there's some areas there that, that we're needing to refine and so we've got a group that's working just on that. We've struck another ad hoc committee that will focus on that. Then we need a, a fair amount of work that has to be done for the assistant principal and the principal's evaluation process that hasn't been attended to. And so we are, that will be a fair amount of work for us to do some reestablishing of that work or just even establishing. Um, so we, we've done, I think, a good amount of work on that today, but we've set some time aside in the next couple of weeks to just focus on that alone. Uh, so we'll be doing some work on that. In With regards to just academics this year, you're going to see a focus on science as uh, teachers start to uh, align with the new science standards that have come out and uh, so there'll be some curriculum work. Martina will be heading that up. Uh, she'll also be heading up the implementation of the new math series of the K-8 to uh, that came in this summer and so there's some good work being done in that area. Totally new topic, team chairs. Team chairs have been uh, working out of central office. We are moving those those team chair positions out to the schools. That is a fair shift, a fair amount of a shift. Uh, the team chairs are used to being in central office. I'm not sure if they've been here forever. Kathy, that might be a question maybe you might have an answer to. Were they always here or were they out in the schools and then came here? Or I'm not sure exactly what past history has been. I think that <coughs> they used to be in the buildings, the buildings and then they became centralized after I left. But okay. they were more, which to me makes sense. So well, it was it was a unanimous decision that was made. Uh, we had this discussion at our retreat with the principals, and uh, unanimously, we all decided that that's where they needed to be. So we're just in the process. Jeff is helping to move each of our team chairs into uh, their designated location in the buildings. Uh, so that's happening. Um, review of budget process. I put this down just because we are taking such a, a hard look. I mean, I think that the audit, the forensic audit is gonna help us, but we're just working through a number of different things. I think Pat's done a great job with us um, in, in working through some things I know that uh, will probably come out in the next little bit. Not that, the, not that it's bad practice, it's just that I think we'll change some of the practices. And uh, you know, we're looking forward, forward to improving our practice and implementing best practice. Mm -hmm. So you'll see us, uh, some more information come out to, uh, with regards to that. Another topic is just a general assessments, particularly at the K-8 to level. Um, those in education would know that I'm, what I'm talking about is reviewing use of dibbles, fondness of Pinnell, grade, uh, uh, bass, you, you name it. We're, we're taking a look overarchingly at that to ensure that we are not over-assessing. So I've charged the teaching and learning group to uh, pull some, some things together with regards to making sure that what we're assessing is what we need and the data that we are getting from that is being utilized in an appropriate fashion to drive instruction. So it, you'll hear bits and pieces of that come out uh, as we move forward this year as well. Um, updating of forms, this is primarily in both the uh, business office and human resources. Uh, we are taking a look at just general updating, reviewing of our processes, procedures, and forms that we've been using. Uh, so just really modernizing, I think, that. Um, the, the last thing that I'll bring up tonight is I've put here refining the district rental processes and billing. And we've struck a new ad hoc committee for that as well. Jeff is chairing that. They've already <coughs> met once or twice. I'm not sure, Pat, if you've been involved. I think you've been involved. Have you been involved with that as well? A little bit. Yeah. So you will see very, very likely I've suggested that they also take a look at what our charges are for rentals and that that be, be seriously looked at. Um, so you will probably see a recommendation come forward to the school committee at some point in time this year when that group has finished its work and they bring it all forward. And so those are the key other bullet points right now outside of facilities that we're also working on. 
And that's it, Chairman. Can we get you to put that in the packet so that when we're doing your evaluation, we'll use those as um, sure. evidentiary? You want Absolutely. us to do that, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, correspondence. Oh, I'm um, sorry. So Nick? you mentioned that you uh, have the MCAS online. Isn't the MCAS getting phased out and isn't part going in? You know, that's a great question. I, I'm, I'm so impressed that you asked that question. <laughs> so we're calling it, we, it's the state. <laughs> sorry. Oh, so oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> that was such a full oh, call. <laughs> This, that's because I was working at the state, Nick, before, and that's why. <laughs> the state Poor is lady. looking at um, development of what we, we affectionately called MCAS 2.0. I believe you're going to see it have a new name. Um, and so it's really, a, a, if you can imagine, a blend between MCAS, what we call MCAS, and the park. Now, the park is really the platform that this sits on, which is the whole computer-generated component of it. So if you can imagine MCAS and park coming together, you're going to have this nice blended piece now. And the reason we say that, measured progress is really the driver behind MCAS. And they were really the ones that would help with the state to design the questions and such. But the park platform and some of the park information that was um, developed over the course of the last two to three years is all coming together in a nice meshing. And so that's what you're going to see coming on stream now. But I do think that they're giving it a new name as such. One of the things, if I can digress from that question just for a minute, one of the things that I am most excited about is that we had a park fellow within the Neshoba Regional District, uh, actually at the high school. I, uh, Kim and I were talking about this earlier. And um, I'm thrilled that he's involved because I know that he's going to bring some good detail to that ad hoc group because the, you know we've not done this as a district and so I think that he will bring some great expertise to the table. But that was a great question so I don't know if that answers it but you can, if you can imagine it's going to be a blending now. And can you, so like if you do it online and so like you have a multiple choice question A, B, C, D, um, can you like cross out like it's not A, it's not B, it's not C, it's D? Um, no. Because I do that all the time. Yeah. One of the concerns I have right now is that because we haven't done it as a school district, I'm, I'm worried about, and which is why I've struck this ad hoc committee, I'm worried about the fact that our students haven't had a lot of exposure to this. And so we need to make sure that everybody is really comfortable. So for example, there will be drop down boxes that you would utilize to help you in the same kind of area that you're talking about. And you'll have the ability to do things there that you've never had the ability to do when you were doing MGAS. So it's making sure that everybody knows what they can do with those drop down boxes. So they gotta be able to practice on it before you want That's them to exactly take it. That's exactly right. So they're familiar with That's it. That's exactly right. And so we want to make sure that everybody is really comfortable and confident moving forward into the new test. And remember this is only grade four and eight for this year. In a perfect world, we'd have more, but right now we're starting with four and eight because that's pretty much what the commissioner is looking for. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. There was a value add from the state. <laughs> <laughs> okay, correspondence. Anybody have any correspondence they would like to share? No. Okay, consent agenda. Um, does anybody have any edits? I have edits on the meeting minutes. Um, Nick, what, Nicole, what do you have? Just on the seventh, um, I abstained on the forensic vote. I did not say no to audit. Thank you. And um, Alita, on the June 29th minutes, and I just shut my laptop down. Um, oh, you have it. Yeah, June 29th under district facilities issues. Um, it says previous facilities director. Oh, the last sentence. Um, advised he has documentation these issues were brought to the attention of the previous facilities director but appear to have been addressed. I think there's a to word that's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the finance subcommittee, the one thing I want to mention about that, um, the meeting that was referenced was 
in Lancaster only. So in the third, yeah, it was, there were, each of the towns was supposed to be having their own post-mortem, but the one that I attend was Lancaster. So I don't even know if you need that in there. I just attended the Lancaster. Just meeting. take out the Mr. Darcy. I thought Neil stated that you attended the subcommittee meeting. Was I at the finance subcommittee? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Okay, so, so let's keep it in. <laughs> I remember. That seems like a hundred years audit. ago. What we was it? That's the friends of audit. That was the meeting. That's the meeting I missed. Right. Right. I met with the committee. Oh, you did. You were there. All right, never you mind. Okay, moving on. So I have, I have a humble typo on the same minutes. Sure. On page four, the boiler replacement paragraph, third from the bottom. Yep. Um, just a uh, has not be used, just a den for the. I have a small typo too on the same page. Okay. Sorry, under oil tanks. Okay. In the middle it says Dr. Bates advised, he is advised. Advised, he was advised, if the oil tank, not the only tank, if the oil tank is only used for heat and above ground. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot of advice and a lot of onlys. And <laughs> Did that's you it. catch that, Alina? Yep. Okay. And anything else? Thank you, everyone. Okay, so if there are no other edits, then we'll assume that the meeting minutes of 629, 1677, 16826, 16 are adopted as, as amended and the warrant of September 16th. Um, items to consider for next agenda, what do you folks have? Subcommittees, anything that you want to bring forward? Um, we may after Monday's meeting, so can we? Yes, yeah, you can, you can shuttle them over. Just okay. um, please remember to give me and Alita We have to have the agenda posted 48 hours before the meeting, so if you could give me a couple of days so that we can make sure that we have all the documents that you need in order to get them into the packet, that would be great. We're going to be reviewing the superintendent's entry plan at our next meeting. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll revise the goals with the input you're going to send me. Um, and operating norms. You uh, yeah, we'll we'll have I'll have the draft for the yeah. next meeting. We'll talk Just about it, and then maybe we can speak to it. But speak to it. We'll yeah. Unpack it. Yep. I think that sounds good, and I think I think that's all I have. So if you find that you have other items, let me know. Otherwise, I just want it noted for the record that this meeting is now concluded. I need someone to give me I a motion, and it's ten minutes of eight. I hope that we adjourn. Second. Second, Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.